Number one gives us the graph of f of x, which is equal to e to the x, and a graph of g, which is a transformation of f. So write an equation for the function g. So we're going to do g of x equals, and we're going to write it in terms of, we can write it in terms of f and then put it in with this e. You could do it directly to e to the x if you wanted as well. Um, but we can see that it's going to be a reflection. So if we look at this, and I just kind of draw that point on here. So we're going to reflect this over the x-axis. So we're going to need to flip it up and down. Okay. So we're going to flip it here over the x. So reflect um, over the x. And I like to think about that that's up to down because then that's impacting our range or our y values. Then we're going to need to... Um, translate it to the right two units. So those are the two things we need to get in here. Um, so like I said, a reflection over the X goes up and down. So it impacts your Y values. So it's going to be outside of your function. So you've got a negative on the outside. And then when we want to move it to the right two units, that's impacting our X values. And it's going to be the opposite of what it feels like. So when we move to the right, that's going to be a minus 2 on the inside. So we have g of x equals the opposite of f of x minus 2. So if we want to write this with our actual e to the x function, we would have a negative out front. And then we would have e to the x minus 2. Number 2. Describe the transformation that takes the graph of f to the graph of g. So in this first one, we see this negative out front. And it's, again, out front of the function. So that's going to be an up and down reflection. It's going to impact the y values. And so when we reflect up to down, you're reflecting over the x-axis. So this is going to be reflect over the x-axis. And then um, this 2.7 out here is going to be translating up two units. Well, up 2.7 units. Since that's also outside of our function. So that's going to move it um, up. And then um, I just noticed that there's an error here. This is fixed in your book now, but this is supposed to be an X. So um, not supposed to be a 7 there. All right, then B has F of X and G of X. Um, now this one, we need to deal with this inside part right here first. The reason being is that we have this negative in here. And um, so anytime you've got something times by the X, you want to make sure it's factored out of this inside. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1. So negative X divided by negative 1 is X. And then positive 3.1 divided by negative 1 is negative 3.1. And then we have that whole thing to the fifth plus 1. So this is our g of x, and it helps us to see what the translation actually would have been in here. So for this one, we've got this negative 1 on the inside. So that impacts our um, domain values. So this is going to impact our x values. So this is going to have us reflecting left to right, which is over the y-axis. So this one's going to reflect... Um, over the y-axis. Then we have um, this minus 3.1 in here. So this is going to move us, um, it's going to translate to the right 3.1 um, 3 units. And then we also have um, the plus one on the outside. So this is going to translate up one unit. Then um, let me separate these. 
Okay, so then um, for this next one, for part C, we have um, just a minus 26 on the outside. So that's just going to be a translate um, down 26. Part D, we've got this negative outside of the root. So that's going to impact our range. So that's going to reflect and it's going to impact the y value. So it's going to flip up to down, which means reflect over the x-axis. Then we've got the minus um, 0 0.004 on the inside. So that's going to translate um, to the right 0 0.004 units. Number three, write an equation whose graph is a parabola, meaning an x squared function with a vertex at one four, which opens upward. So remember from x squared, that vertex is at zero, zero. So when we write this function, okay, we want to move the vertex from zero to a positive one. So this is going to be a minus one on the inside. And then we want to move the y value from 0 to 4, so up 4. And then this also wants us to open upward, so this will just stay positive. Part B wants us to write an equation of a parabola again, but now the vertex is going to be at 2, negative 3. So now we're going to want to move to the right 2 units, which is a minus 2 on the inside. And then we're going to want to go down to negative 3. So this is going to be minus 3. And it wants it to open downward. So instead of upward, we want it to flip over the x-axis and open downward. So that's going to be a negative on the outside of this function. Number four, describe how to move the graph so that it better matches the data. So we're certainly um, going to have to do a, a translation, and we're also going to have to do a reflection. So if we want to take and reflect this graph first, we certainly can. Um, so I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. So I'm just going to draw a point that's on the x-axis so that when I flip this, I know um, where my graph should stay since when we reflect over a line a point on the reflection will stay on the reflection so I'm going to just flip it over the x-axis which is up down making sure that this point stays where it's supposed to and then that will help me um, to determine now what I'm going to have to do and so now we're going to have to maybe just translate it whoops translate it up so move this point up here, however many units that is. So it looks like it's a little bit more than halfway to five. So it's maybe at like three or four. So we'll have to reflect over the x-axis and then translate um, up maybe three units, four units. So something in there. Number five, they give us the graph of f of x for the values of x from negative 10 to 0. And then they want us to sketch f for, for 0 to 10, so on this positive or right-hand side of the graph, for each of these different characteristics. So if f is an even function, remember even functions for the opposite inputs give you back the same output. So if at negative 1 it's at 0, then at 1 it's going to be at 0. Negative 2, it's at 5. Then 2, it's going to be at 5. 3, it's at this value. So, or sorry, negative 3, it's at that value. So 3, it's going to be at that value. And so on. Okay, so each of these will have the same output just on the opposite side. And so then we can kind of sketch this. So this would be the even version. So this green one is the even version. The odd version... K would be reflecting over the axis like we just did here, but then also reflecting again over the x axis. So that's just going to take all these y values and bring them down. So this point would still be the same. 
2 is at 5 here, so we would want it at negative 5. Okay, then this one's about at almost 7. So then it's going to be at almost negative 7. This one's at like 7.5, so it's going to be at negative 7.5 and, and so on. And it's just going to reflect um, over that x-axis. So reflected over the y-axis to that green one and then over the x-axis to give us um, the orange one. So that's going to be our odd function. And then graph one that's neither even nor odd. So I could just take this even function, duplicate it. Let me just change the color here. And this one would not be either. Um, let me erase the word even from it. <clears throat> um, but this one wouldn't be, whoops. This one wouldn't be even or odd. I mean, you could just take this and move it down a little bit because then it's not a reflection over the y-axis. You could even just take this one and translate it down or translate it left, so if, left or right. So if I just had it still like this, so if I just had this function, I could just move it like this. This one's neither. This one's neither. So there's tons of options. Any function you draw that has the same shape that isn't either the green or the orange is going to be a neither. Number six, here are the graphs of F and G. Which sequence of transformations will take F to G? Um, so here's F. So these sequences need to take this one on to G. So reflect it over the y-axis. So let me draw um, a point on the y so we can match it back up. So reflect over the y-axis, so that's going to be left and right, and then put this point back, and then translate up to, so that one looks like it works. A is good. A reflection over the x-axis, then a translation up by 2. So this one, um, when we reflect over the x-axis, is going to end up this amount below the x-axis. So let's flip it up and down. So this is going to end up here. So like the same distance below. And then it just wants us to translate it up to. Well, that's definitely not going to match on G. Um, so B is bad. A translation up to. So we're going to go up to and then reflect over the Y axis. So then flip left to right. And that Looks like it's going to be good. So C is good. Translate it up to, okay, so translate up to, then reflect over the x-axis. Well, that's just going to flip it down like this, right? So that's going to be bad. So D is wrong. E is a translation up to, then a translation to the left 5. So that's definitely not going to work either. So just A and C for that one.